I am half Japanese and half white. My father was born in Osaka, Japan. My mother was born in Washington, DC. I was born in Battle Creek, Michigan. I have an older sister who I'm sure is absolutely mortified that I'm giving a talk about this. My sister and I are half. Looking at my parents, little me felt confused. I looked at myself and thought that I didn't really look like either of them. Let me get one thing out of the way. I know that what I'm going to talk about doesn't apply to everyone. And I know that how I felt was all in my head. But I think I speak for a lot of biracial kids when I say that I never really knew where I fit in. I know that when I was little, I wanted nothing more than to have blonde hair and blue eyes just like my mom. I didn't want the blonde hair and blue eyes because I thought that being white was better than being half, but I did want them so that I would feel like I had more of a solid identity. Growing up, I focused more on my crisis of wanting to be white rather than Japanese. I didn't yet feel the need to prove myself to the Asian community because I figured that they would accept me exactly as I was. I only knew two other half kids growing up. I lost touch with one of them after about first grade, but I ran into the other later on in middle school. I thought of him as a lucky half kid. He had blue eyes and was completely white passing, despite his mother being Chinese. Moreover, his last name wasn't Asian, so nobody even guessed that he was biracial if he didn't tell them. I was jealous. He had complete control over what other people saw in him. But I liked people guessing at my heritage when they heard my last name, Kitagawa, and it often led to interesting conversations. But I began to realize that since I didn't speak the language and wasn't quite Asian passing, a few questions would always linger in my mind. Am I actually Japanese? Do I have a right to this label? Is it dumb that I'm even worrying about this? These questions don't seem like a big deal, and they really shouldn't be, but they felt huge to me. Growing up, I wanted to have blonde hair and blue eyes like my mom. But by the time I was in middle school, I wanted to have black hair and eyes like my dad. I made Asian friends, and I tried to grasp onto that part of my identity. I thought it would help but I still felt like I was just playing a role. Imagine little sixth grade me. I know, not much different from me today. But imagine little sixth grade me sitting my first day of math class at a new middle school and looking across the room at my classmates. I saw an Asian girl sitting near the right wall and all I could think about was how much I wished I could be like her. Later, we would become friends, but at that moment, I just felt jealous of her. She had beautiful black hair that was pinned straight and I wished that mine could be like that, but I knew that I should be proud of who I was. I just couldn't help it. In school, a lot of my Asian friends made fun of me for not speaking Japanese. Most of them were Chinese and they spoke their parents' languages to varying degrees of fluency. At first, it was like I was a white girl who just so happened to know a lot about Japan. I shrugged it off, and for the most part, it didn't bother me. We lovingly called our friend group the 350% club, because the three of them were each 100% Asian, plus my 50. It always made me sad, though. They would compliment me on my lighter hair and my white eyebrows, saying that I'm so lucky that I'm half but these compliments just left me feeling uncomfortable. My experience was similar with my white friends. To them, half Asian meant totally Asian, and many of them even asked me to give them Japanese lessons. When I told them I didn't know Japanese, I was met with blank stares and people asking why my parents never taught me. I didn't bother to tell them that it was because I just never wanted to. They would make jokes about anime and they always seemed shocked to hear that I hadn't seen whichever one they were rambling about that day. 
They wanted to hear all about Japan and what it was like there, and they never stopped to think that I might not necessarily be the expert on everything Asian. I felt trapped between my halves, and I wanted desperately to fit into one or the other. Unable to decide, I found that I was constantly trying to prove myself to both communities. Personally, I identified more with my Japanese side. And in middle school, the Asian community finally started to accept me. I tried to be the perfect Asian stereotype. I played violin, I earned straight A's, I was even part of the dragon at the local China festival. Did you hear that? I wanted to fit in so badly that I participated in a different cultures festival so that I would finally be Asian enough. But I still felt like I was just faking it. I felt like I was letting down other half kids by wanting to change myself. I looked at the Asian community and thought that it would be worth changing myself to be a part of that. I didn't think that they would let me join their group if I didn't give up that part of myself and identify only with that half. And to an extent, I was right. They love talking about all things Asian, and we talked about very little else. But I always felt like I could never truly be one of them. That brings me to a key part of my experience being biracial, racial imposter syndrome. I felt like I was tricking everyone so that they would like me. I didn't know about racial imposter syndrome until a few months ago when I found an NPR article about it. I didn't realize that other people felt the same way I did. So when I read the article, I thought to myself, that's exactly what it is. I felt a newfound validation in my feelings and I knew that I wasn't alone. I had always felt like I hadn't belonged to either world and I felt pressured to take a side. But I realize now that other people felt the same way. They felt like they were just pretending to belong to one world as though they didn't actually have a right to it. They were wrong, of course, but I didn't realize that yet. According to the 2010 census, 2.9% of the population are of two or more races. This percentage may seem small, but that's still over 9 million people. Now I'm sure that not all of them feel the effects of racial imposter syndrome, but it's a safe bet that at least some of them do, and that's a huge amount of people. Of them, 1.6 million are like me, being half Asian and half white. Even just looking at those numbers, I began to realize how many of us there are. Although we're definitely a minority, I feel like that's enough people that we should feel legitimate in our identities. I started to feel blessed that I had been exposed to both cultures. And I started to try to accept myself for who I was. I realized that I could exist in a space between my two halves rather than switching between them constantly. I shouldn't have to give up a half of myself for fear of being rejected. I should be able to celebrate myself in my entirety. I grew up thinking that my friends wouldn't accept me if I didn't take a side. But I realize now that my friends will accept me even if I don't quite accept myself yet. Thank you.